You are still muted, sorry. Haley, we can't hear you. Continue. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Woo. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. Um, I'm assuming no one heard anything, right? So I'll start from the top. Hello. Welcome to Cubixel Studio. My name is Haley, and today we are going to be creating some trendy, bohemian, kind of modern art. Uh, this is a very popular, very trendy kind of art. If you go into, you know, home goods or any home decor place or you go on Pinterest, uh, Etsy, you see a ton of this uh, style of art. And if you go to my apartment, you see this style of art everywhere. I'm obsessed with it. It's super simple. And we're going to make it even easier with the Cubixel app. We'll use smart trace technology to trace, and then we'll bring it to life with some with some color. So uh, first things first, if you haven't already, please download the Cupixel app. And when you enter into the app, uh, you can enter your email address and uh, choose the option to connect an art set. And uh, there you can enter this promo code here. Uh, all of these instructions, I believe, are in the Zoom chat if you want to uh, refer to that as well. But uh, this will give you 14, 14 days free on the app, access to absolutely everything. Um, and after the end of your 14-day trial, if you stick with it, we will send you a device stand, which we'll be using today. So if you did purchase a stand for this class, uh, you will get another one. And the fun thing about that is uh, your membership is for four people. So you can share this membership with three other friends or family, and you can give your extra device stand. Uh, but if you don't have a device stand to use today, you can use a tall cup or just something tall that you can kind of place your phone flat on top. And this was custom made with Customated. Oh my goodness. Customized with the app as well. So little plug, you can find that on the app. Uh, tons of artist-led experiences, uh, but lucky you, you get the real deal. You get me in real time. So let's jump in. Uh, I will definitely take it slow to start for people that are kind of tr uh, trickling in, but what we're going to do is when you open the app and you sign in, you enter your promo code, you'll see the main feed here where I am now. And we're going to go to my studio. That's this plus sign icon at the bottom center of your screen. Tap that and you'll see three tabs at the top, gallery, photos, and text. So photos is where you can upload your own photos to trace like this cute little dog. You can create a custom text, but everything that we're doing today we have in the gallery for you. So you'll see four different kinds of backgrounds that you can use to kind of build your composition. And then a ton of different plant outlines that we can trace after that. We can kind of get creative and build our own composition with that. And I will get into that in just a second. But for materials, while everyone kind of gets onto the app, uh, like I said, we're using the device stand. If you don't have this, you can just use a tall cup. I've got a piece of Bristol paper. Um, any Bristol paper or marker paper works really well for the materials we're using. Uh, I have it in uh, eight by eight inches. Any size that works for you, you can do. Of course, if you wanna do something larger uh, to hang up on your wall, you can. But I thought for the sake of time, we'll shrink the size just a little bit. I have a pencil and an eraser for tracing. And I've got my uh, two sets of markers here. I've got uh, some alcohol-based markers and some fun spring uh, floral colors. 
And I've got some uh, metallic paint pens as well in uh, some you know, bronze, gold, also springtime colors. I have a couple of fine point black pens just in case I need it. I've got a ruler in case I need it. And last but not least, I have a piece of scrap paper if I want to test any colors before I put them on my paper. But I think we're ready to dive in, right? Am I missing anything, you guys? All right. I'm sorry, excuse me, I get nervous. Okay, uh, I am joined by Shirley and Nick here in the studio. Uh, Nick is on the cameras and Shirley is on the Zoom chat. So if you have any questions about the app, uh, how it works, you can um, ask Shirley. And if you have any questions for me, Shirley's right here. She can share that uh, with me. So are we ready? I think so, let's dive in. So again, this is the main feed. So when you open the app and you're signed in, you enter your uh, art set code, this is what you see. We're gonna tap the My Studio plus sign icon and we're gonna go to the gallery. And first we're going to kind of build our composition with a background. And of course you can do this free-handed if you'd like. You can just have fun with it. It's very abstract, very flowy kind of shapes. Um, but I'm gonna stick to one of these, keep it simple. And I'm, I love this one. I'll do this one right here, abstract number two. When you see that green check mark, you know you're good to start. And when you open the camera, when you go to trace, the camera fires and it searches for your drawing surface by looking for four corners. So I have this dark gray mat underneath my paper that assists in the app recognizing my paper. If I were to have this white paper on this white table, the app might not be able to find it uh, by searching for those four corners. And then once it finds it, it tracks it. As long as all four corners are in frame. So from here, we can adjust the transparency or opacity till we're comfortable. I like to leave it somewhere in the middle. And then another thing you could do is you can kind of use the drag feature to get a little bit more creative, make it more your own if you'd like, make it larger, you can move it and add some more of your own elements. But I like how it is as is. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And here I can pinch to zoom in, and just look through my screen, grab my pencil and trace. I always like to bring my opacity down to the point where I can see both the lines on my screen and the lines that I am drawing. So take it slow. It's definitely a learning curve if this is your first time using the app to trace. And what's nice about this kind of artwork that we're doing here is it does not require precision or perfection. Uh, it's definitely a stylistic thing. So have fun with it, make it your own. I'm just gonna be tracing quickly. Anything that I wanna fix, I can fix after. But while we're tracing, uh, I encourage you all to let us know uh, where you're tuning in from. We are in Boston, Massachusetts. We had the marathon today, the Boston Marathon. Is that over yet, you guys, you think? Yeah. Yeah, I have a friend uh, saying that she was there. She has a, a friend that's running. God bless them, right? Any marathon runners in the class, let me know. Um, Cause if so, I want to tip my hat to you. I don't know how you guys do it. There's a part for general knowledge. What else, what, what other surfaces you can use for Technology on. Yes. So uh, 
I don't know if you all heard Shirley, but uh, the question is, uh, what other surfaces can you create on besides paper and canvas? You can create on quite literally anything. Um, what's cool is that, you know, with the smart trace technology, it searches for those corners, right? It searches for a paper, it searches for a canvas, but say you're working on a black paper or a tumbler that you're customizing or wood or glass or shoes. We do shoes as well, tote bags, clothes, blah, 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 you name it. You can work with smart trace off, which is just a simple projection. So when you have a tall cup or something that you can kind of elevate your phone flat on, you get that parallel projection um, to parallel to your paper or whatever surface it is you're working on. Uh, we have tons of different uh, artist-led experiences that use those non-traditional surfaces that I encourage you to check out. Uh, but what's nice is that you have the 14 days free on the app. You can explore everything that we have to offer, all of the different projects that you can create with the technology and with uh, artist-led guidance, uh, it's it's borderline overwhelming to say the least how much you can create with the app. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. But I hope that answered your question. Just continuing with my funky shapes here. And then I know in a lot of these, or in maybe one or two of these, um, backgrounds we've put in the gallery, uh, you have a lot of lines that are very, very close together, like this one here. And then I think the other one that has like an arch. Um, and I just want to say, you know, go back and repeat that you don't need to be perfect. If you want to skip some lines, they're very close together. I know it can be a little uh, confusing, a little bit straining to the eye. So just know, rest assured that you can do anything you want. The tracing is here to help you, but I encourage, I always encourage, um, you know, the creative freedom to switch up the outline, do something a little bit different. I'm sure I will. I'm almost done with my background. Yes, I will show in just a second when I'm done tracing this because we're going to go back anyways, if that's all right. So once I finish tracing this, everybody, I'm going to show you again how I got to this point, how you're able to find all of the um, outlines that we're using. All right, and then this last big shape here. You notice I have a very loose hand. Um, I find that the level of precision that you get with the tracing, like I said, uh, there's like this, uh, I don't know, this urge to kind of follow it directly. And when you do so, you're kind of keeping that straight line and you're kind of tensing up your muscles. So after doing it so frequently, um, I find that the best way is to just kind of loosen up, use a loose hand. And uh, if you want to fix anything after the fact, you absolutely can. But Whenever I'm done tracing anything, I always like to zoom out and bring my opacity bar all the way down. And something that you can do if it helps, you can kind of shade in those blocked shapes to distinguish between the, you know, the shaded in shapes uh, versus the lines here. We'll just do that really quick. And then I'll go back and show you. So this is the artwork tab that we started on, but say you're just tuning in. Oh, really quick though. Something I have to mention. This is one of my favorite 
uh, features of the app. Every time you use the tracing technology, the app automatically generates a time-lapse video uh, that you can share uh, outside the app and inside the app. This is very new. We have spaces. It's our community feature. It's kind of like our, our app's version of Instagram. Uh, and you can share your uh, finished artworks as well as now your time-lapse videos. So close that for now, but just know that you can find all of your time lapses in the menu and you can add a photo at the end. You can change the music. Super cool. Sorry. You can also subscribe from the menu. Yes. You can also subscribe from the menu. So you could do that after the fact, by the way, because we're using uh, everything in the gallery tab of my studio. Um, the promo code or the art set code is there for you to explore after the fact. Uh, so if you're just tuning in, you wanna know how I got to uh, the tracing. This is the main feed. Uh, we are going to go to my studio, which is that plus sign icon at the center, the bottom of your screen. We'll tap that. And then here you'll see three tabs at the top, gallery, photos, and text. Photos is where you can upload your own photo. Text is where you can create your own uh, custom text design. And gallery is where we've included our licensed artworks uh, for you to use and specifically what we're doing today. So you'll see these four uh, abstract backgrounds or boho backgrounds. This is what we started with. So I would suggest if you're just tuning in, um, trace one of these backgrounds and um, after that, we can move on to uh, where we're about to move on now. I know that made no sense whatsoever, but we're going to go with it. Uh, we have all of these different plant outlines for us to trace. So let's see, which one do I want to do? Oh, Nick, help me out. I'm having decision fatigue. I kind of love this one. What? The twin plants. All right, we'll do it. That's That was this one right here. All right, let's do it. And what's nice is that you can add more than one plant. So select my plant. We'll start, go back to trace. Again, all four corners of my paper are visible. So the app is able to find my paper and superimpose my outline right onto it. So from here, I'm going to use drag and I'm going to pinch to shrink it a bit and position it where I want it. And I think I want it right over here. So I'm going to work with a little bit of the uh, negative space. So you see, I don't have anything kind of traced here, no shapes or lines. So I think I'll have my plant right there, bring my opacity down and I will zoom in to trace yet again. So it might get a little confusing tracing on top of uh, lines that you've already placed there. So what you can do is you can kind of erase the lines underneath as you go, or you can erase afterwards, or you can just kind of shade in um, the parts that you want to be on top. So if I want this plant to be over absolutely everything that I've traced so far. I can maybe lightly shade it in with my pencil just to help me after the fact. But if you can distinguish uh, between your plants and your background just by looking at it, then you don't have to worry. I have to say this kind of artwork that we're doing now is so cute for a tote bag. I have, um, actually have a tote bag that I've started and I haven't <laughs> finished and it's been collecting dust for months, but, um, this kind of artwork, this kind of design on a tote bag, very, very cool. 
we have plenty of, um, we do have a tote bag customizing experience so we can walk you through technicalities of that as well. Yeah, tons of content that you can check out after this. But I'm done tracing my plant, my twin plants rather. And if you wanna omit the detail in the plants, you absolutely can. But I like, like what Nick said, I like the look of uh, one being bold and colored in and the other having the detail in there. I think to balance it out, I'll trace one more plant and I'll pop it over here. Let's see if we go back to the gallery. Which one? Which one? Hmm. We'll do this one, the wispy plant. Go back to trace. Again, all four corners are visible. I'm gonna bring this all the way up so you can see, but I'm gonna twist it all the way around. I'm gonna do a 180. We're gonna pop this over here. I'll have it kind of going off the page too. All right. Wait, so right away, feel that I might get confused with the background beneath it. So I'll erase. Only when you finish painting, can you show exactly if someone wants to upload any design? How can they upload any type of design? Yes, like the photo? Yeah. Yeah, of course. So after this, after I'm done tracing this plant, I'm going to show you guys uh, how you can upload your own design or your own photo. Um, and then while we're at it, I could show you how to create the text as well. Because you can apply text to this if you want. You want to make it like, um, like an affirmational home decor or wall art. That could be really cool. You know what? I just came up with this idea. Um, and it might be a terrible idea, but I'm going to share it with you all. Um, if you are like me and you have terrible penmanship and a terrible signature, but you want to sign your work with a nice, neat signature uh, that's consistent, so you know, recognizable consistency, right? You can practice on paper, practice your artist signature, and then uh, take a photo, and then you can upload that and um, use it to sign every artwork. I don't know. Charlie's like, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Game changer. Groundbreaking, right? All right. I'm almost done. And before I go back and show you guys how you can do that, I'm definitely going to erase some things. But I think I want them kind of going over this shape in the center but maybe behind the shape. No, it'll be going over. So I'll just erase the shape underneath. And then yeah, I'll have these going over these lines. Clean this up a bit. All right. Now, if you wanted to upload your own design, whether it's for this project or any kind of project, you can go back to artwork and you can use the photo tab. When you go to photo, tap add photo, you can select more, keep a current selection. We'll just say keep current selection. We'll upload this photo of baby Layla. That's Nick's newborn baby. 
crop the photo to your liking. If it's uh, not a square, you can actually zoom out and you'll get the transparent border. But crop it to your liking and the app will automatically generate an outline. Uh, this is the only element of AI that we use in Smart Trace. It uses AI to kind of uh, pinpoint what lines it should uh, define, but you can adjust it as well. So you can add some shadows, you can add a mid-tone shade, you can adjust the width of your lines, you could add the background or leave it out, details, all that good stuff. And then say so we'll go to save. And then the really cool thing about tracing with a photo is that you have options. I'm just flipping this over so you can see. But again, all four corners of my paper visible to the app. What you can do is you can trace exactly or directly from the photo, or you can tap through layers to grayscale, uh, posterization or tones, that digital outline that you adjusted, the mid-tones that you adjusted, combined back to the photo. So really, really cool. And of course, you can use all these other features like drag that we've been using as well. Uh, text design, go to text, add text, and we'll say, I don't know, why, why am I blanking? Hello. <laughs> and you can tap through the fonts to choose a font that you like, like this one. And again, project all four corners of your paper visible to the camera. You can use drag to position it wherever you'd like. And can you show this, all of this is under my paper so they yep. know how to get to that? Yep. I am going to put the phone to the side um, after this. So uh, just so everyone knows, this will be the last I show on the app, um, unless you guys have a request. Uh, and look, another time lapse. Um, so my studio, all right, from the main feed, this is what you see on the main feed. You see those tabs at the bottom, those five tabs. We're going to go to that plus sign icon in the center. That is my studio. And everything that we've uh, created for this project today is in the gallery tab. So if you go to gallery, you'll see these four uh, backgrounds, along with a ton of different plants to choose from. And then more licensed artworks for your own creation. But that is my studio. Again, from the main feed, go to that plus sign icon. And here you can access uh, the gallery, your photos, your text uh, to create on your own. So basically without the instruction of uh, an artist. But if you go, you scroll through all the different categories that we have to offer, you can see hundreds and hundreds of artist-led experiences. There I am, there I am again. Um, so many different styles, mediums, themes, all that good stuff. So you have tons to explore. All right, I think I'm gonna put my phone to the side. What are we, are we, what do we think? We're ready? All right, awesome. So put this over here. Nick, is that okay? Am I blocking anything? All right, so before I get into coloring, I am going to kind of just clean up a little bit. I wanna get rid of uh, the background that's kind of shining through my plants. So I want my plants to be in the front, front and center. I'll clean up any, you know, any marks, any uh, mistakes, for lack of a better word, things that I want to get rid of. All right, now we can start coloring. So I'm going to start by um, filling in 
my background colors first, and then I'll decide what I want to do for the plants. But typically with the plants, uh, I like, again, separate them from the background, right? Uh, you can do so by shading them in, in black. You could do so by coloring absolutely everything and leaving them blank or leaving them white. You can use the metallic gold or silver. You see a lot of gold in this kind of um, style of artwork, this trendy boho artwork, uh, lots and lots of gold, bronze, stuff like that. So uh, I like to work uh, in the background first and I'll start with those smaller shapes that I kind of shaded in for my reference, but I am gonna erase because I don't want these pencil marks to shine through completely. So if I do these now, I know that they are solid shapes. They're filled in with color. I think I'll do a green and a, like a pale pink. I like it. All right. Uh, two sides to your markers, typically a chiseled side and a brush side. I love to use the brush side, uh, but it's really your personal preference. Shade this shape in here and start to think about the shapes and lines surrounding it. So if I have this shape filled in green, the outline around the shape I could do a darker green, I could do bold or black, or I could do a contrasting color like a, like a red or a pink or even an orange. Before I decide, I'm going to move on to that other shape. And yeah, I think I'll do, mm. I'm changing my mind, I'm changing my mind, I think, because I want to do some lighter kind of neutral tones in the back here. So what I'll do is switch gears and I'll do a fun magenta purpley color here. I'm just going to go over these lines because I'm going to have these lines be, I think, metallic. These ones right here. But this is where you can really make your artwork your own. You know, you have tracing, which is a jumping off point, and you can follow it exactly. You get that level of precision that allows you to recreate it exactly if you want to, or you can even get creative with uh, the tracing. Like I said, by kind of adding your own elements, um, omitting some elements, whatever you want. But this is where all the creative decision making comes to play. And this is where you can really, you know, shine. All right. All right. I know that this here is the shape, and that line beneath it is that line, right? So this is the shape to color in. I will leave that for now. I think I'll move on to this one here. I know that. This part is the shape and this line is the outline. That makes sense. All right. I'm thinking for this one, we'll do a very vibrant kind of pink. We'll start here. Can you share your stage process when you start something? Do you know exactly how you want it to look? Do you, do you make changes? That's a great question. Um, so for those of you who didn't hear, uh, Shirley, or is somebody asking? Yeah, it's kind yeah. of like, you know, is there a place for changing uh, direction? Yeah, I mean, it's that's such a good question. The question is, um, what's my creative process? Do I have an idea uh, going in to a creation um, or do I figure it out as I go? And I think it really depends on the day. In this sense, I'm kind of figuring it out as I go. I know I had a certain kind of spring color palette in mind, but I find that when I pre-plan too much, uh, especially when it comes to fun projects like this, where I'm just kind of enjoying the, the process, I'm enjoying the creation, 
Um, if I go in with a, a solid plan, um, I'll feel the need to stick to that plan. And oftentimes you learn as you do. So let me, let me rephrase. Anytime I go into creating anything, um, with a plan, I find that it kind of limits my creativity. So you can go in with, with an idea, you know, I want to use these colors. I want to get, have this feel or this style. Um, I want to use this tool. Um, but also you can see how it goes, where it takes you as you're creating. And that's where, you know, you'll come across a lot of um, learning opportunities. Sometimes that might not be um, ideal, right? Like if you want something to be, you want to create something beautiful and perfect, uh, we all do. But knowing that that doesn't exist is very freeing in a way when you can just enjoy creating. I know that was a super long answer to a very simple, well, maybe it wasn't a very simple question because it's not a simple yes or no, or I do this and not that. It really depends. So for this, I'm going for it. I didn't really have much of a plan besides the colors and style. So I'll just continue to share with you my thought process as I go. Um, maybe you can show, I don't know, like they can on someone is able so they can see the completed artwork. Yes. Oh. Like these yeah, right here? Yeah. Yeah. Colors. Yes, of course. So a lot of times you'll see, is that good? Can you guys see? All right. A lot of times you'll see, um, like a very warm, neutral, earthy tones uh, with this kind of artwork. Um, on one hand, another hand, you might see a lot of pastel colors. So like really, really light um, muted colors. Um, a lot of vibrant colors as well with what we're doing right now. Because you can kind of create one artwork for every season. You know, this would be like a spring, summer, I would say probably more like a spring. This one might be more, or this one might be more of a summer. This is a fall, you know? Um, but with these kind of markers too, these are my favorite kinds of markers to work with. You can really have fun with it. So I've decided I'm going to go in with a little tiny bit of this magenta color to create some dimension in my shapes. I'll do so by kind of keeping it contained to the edge over here. I'm going back in and blending with that lighter color. Uh, I would say, um, technically speaking and creatively speaking, as you're uh, creating, it's always good to keep in mind um, the big picture, the bigger picture, uh, rather than just focusing on one thing at a time. So instead of, you know, for example, just looking at this one shape and working on this one shape and nothing else, I'm thinking about what color can I make this one here? Should I do a contrasting color? Should I do a metallic color to make it pop? If I do a metallic color here, what should I do with the leaves? Um, so, and also layering, right? So the darker the color, uh, unless it's like a black silhouette, um, typically the more it will kind of fall back, uh, whereas a brighter color will kind of come forward and pop out at you. So these are just little things that I like to keep in mind as I go. And as I continue, which I'm going to do right now, I'm gonna dip into some of these lighter colors. So I think I'll do this kind of like beige pink color for this shade down here. Or no, I'm going to switch it up. I can do an orange because it will complement these two colors. We'll do this really light orange shade. And again, just kind of avoiding 
my plants. You can also go in with colored pencils after the fact. I love combining colored pencils with um, the alcohol markers. So you can create some really cool color combinations. You can build dimension. If you have like three color, three colored markers, right? You can create a hundred colors just by using colored pencils. It's really cool. All right, so I know that this is just an outline, this shape beneath the shape I'm coloring right now. So I can just go right over it. And then here at this edge, I know that this is just kind of a floating line that goes over this entire filled in shape. So I'm gonna work quickly because I want to try to cover all my uh, my shapes and everything, get the complete picture rather than fixate on one shape. So if you see some streaks, it's because I haven't layered, layered it. Sometimes you'll see that, I don't know, it depends on the color or maybe it depends on um, how often you've used this color. Clearly I like orange. You might be able to see some streaks uh, shining through. If you just layer, give it another coat of color, you'll be good to go. You see how that orange makes that green pop and how it complements this warm color right here without blending into it too much. If I were to go in with that lighter pink, it might be too similar to this color here. All right, moving on up here. I'm gonna turn it around, Nick, is that okay? All right, I know my shape is more, you could always go back and look at the artwork as well, but I know one of these is a line and the other one's a shape that's filled in with color. So I'll go in with that neutral kind of pink here. Almost like a complexion color. And it'll really make that purple pop. So, Let's see what the shape is. I think it's this one right here. I apologize, Shirley. You can hear it. Shirley does not like the sound of these markers. I also want to mention that as your color from these markers, as it's wet, you'll see a lot more of those streaks. So as it dries, it'll start to kind of tone down. So another reason why uh, I advise not to fixate like I'm doing right now. So put that to the side, but I think I could make this pop a little bit more. So I'll go in with a slightly darker color on this edge. And go back in with that lighter color and blend. By the way, 
we have um, quite a few or two, two a week, two weekly live uh, classes on the app. Um, so one of them is kind of like a creative break. That's like midday, kind of like around the same time as this. Those are on Tuesdays. And those are more like, let's relax. Let's quite literally take a creative break. Let's let's enjoy some creating together. Let's explore some techniques or let's explore a certain medium or let's just relax. Uh, those are a lot of fun. I share a lot of my creative process in those. And then um, on Thursday evenings, uh, we do a complete artwork. Uh, so specific techniques, specific step-by-step -step instruction. Um, but of course, in that you get uh, a feel for creative process as well. So I think I'm ready to add color to my leaves and then I'll leave my uh, outlines or lines uh, for the end. So what shall we do? So instead of doing something like a gold on this one, which is my inkling, I don't know, my inclination, I love gold. Um, I don't want it to get lost in these warm colors behind it. So maybe I'll keep them white with black lines and then I'll make this one right next to it gold. So I'll just go over what I traced here with a black pen. And I can erase any lines poking through after the fact. I'm going to thicken my lines quite a bit so that they pop out, the shape pops out a little bit more, creates that contrast against the background of color. Let's see, I think I have a, I do, I have a thicker pen. Oh, I don't know if I, I apologize if you can hear our neighbors. Um, maybe I'll chat just to uh, cover that up. Um, Shirley, anything going on in the Zoom chat? Um, no, just questions around if people can upload their own designs. Oh, yes, of and course. Questions about calligraphy. You can? So oh, yes. We do have a couple of um, calligraphy um, centered experiences. They were live, live experiences. And those were with me. Um, I love calligraphy, not a calligraphist or calligraphy <laughs> artist. I don't know. I am so bad at it, but, um, there is a cursive font, uh, in the app and the text editor that I use as like a guide but yes, calligraphy is something that we've been truly dying to add to our um, list of, you know, themes and, and subject matters. Um, it will come soon. But I, I love sharing, okay, something that I love to do more than anything or love to teach more than anything is stuff that I don't know what I'm doing, if that makes any sense. Um, 
because it's like, we're all kind of learning together. So I'm sharing like my techniques, my uh, thought process along the way. And then um, we all learn together. So we have a couple of like live replay experiences on the app with calligraphy that you can check out. Um, but yeah, we need to get some calligraphy for sure. I think for this color here, I think I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to do, I think I'll do a green. I know it's basic, but I think we'll do a green to kind of complement this green over here, but with my metallic paint pen. That's fun. Immediately, I'm, I'm happy with this decision. So based on the previous question, mm -hmm. you can share the thought, again, the thought process of changing from the original pen to do it in gold to green. My thought process for changing it from gold to green? Mm -hmm. So yes, that's a good question. So um, as I was saying, a lot of this style of artwork or oftentimes you'll see lots of gold, lots of use of gold or bronze. Um, and I love, I love gold, love it. But looking at the shapes surrounding this plant here, uh, well, first of all, initially I was like, well, maybe if we do this one gold and this one an outline, no, because you see the warm colors beneath it. You see a lot of saturation beneath it. Uh, I don't want this plant to kind of get lost in it. So having the black outline and keeping it white, it's popping, it's looking like it's kind of layered over these shapes. Uh, similar over here, I thought, you know, we're in, we're just around a lot of warm colors here. Um, so I thought, let's do a metallic color, but let's not do gold for this reason, the warm colors. Um, and then what color do I use? Well, I want something that's uh, going to contrast or kind of make the black pop, um, not blend into the colors behind, but also complement the color palette that I'm using. So I have this green over here. I thought we could kind of make it a full circle by adding some green in this plant. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, but there is another question. Okay. And do we have um, word art or hand lettering art on the app? Are we planning to have? Are we planning to have word? Absolutely. I actually, that's so funny. I have um, our creative break next week. Next Tuesday, we'll be doing some fun uh, letter art, word art. Um, we do have quite a few experiences that use the text editor and we give, you know, creative uh, advice, like how can we take this traced text and make it more like a word design, word art. Um, but it really kind of falls into the calligraphy journaling aspect uh, that we are working to build. So uh, while we might not have a huge selection of experiences to go from now, it's coming. I promise you that. Um, but for now and near future, we'll definitely be doing more of these in our live experiences. Um, so I definitely encourage you to stay tuned and uh, take a look at those upcoming lives. Join me for any um, any kind of word art or calligraphy that you may be interested in. Does that answer your question? Good? Okay, perfect. All right, so now let's kind of work with these lines around these areas. What time is it here? 454. So we are wrapping up. Um, I don't want to go over too, too much. Um, let me know if that's, you know, cut me off whenever, but sharing again, my thought process with uh, the surrounding areas. I definitely want to do some black to balance out this section right here. And maybe I'll do that over these two shapes. So these lines here. I'll make it a bit thicker. One over here.
Now you can see it's starting to come together with this black. It's very subtle, but it kind of ties up the composition because you have the two opposite sides, right? Kind of creating like a, a guidance for your eyes to look towards the center of the artwork. Uh, but it's also kind of making sense with this now here. So moving on to some more colored outlines. This one I'll leave last, but this one right here. Again, the colors around it, we've got green and we've got orange. So what kind of color can we do um, to complement the colors beneath it and also still pop rather than fall into these colors. I'm thinking blue around here. Blue and orange complement each other greatly. But now that I used this blue, I'm thinking I should probably use it somewhere else. And I think I will do that here. I'm realizing now I lost the outline of this shape. So I'm just gonna go over. We're just gonna wing it. And that would be just kind of following the shape, but slightly off, right? So we'll do that. Boom. Now we have a balance. This one right over here. Again, you don't wanna do anything that's too warm or anything that's too um, light because it's in the background. So maybe I'll go in with this purple because I don't want that pink or that red to fall in here. I also want it to be able to shine through on top of this shape. So boom. And it also kind of complements the green as well as the blue outlines that we've created. All right, and then maybe to balance it out, actually, I'll do the purple here and we'll just kind of color it all in so that there is a contrast with these lines back here. Now, if I were to just stick to outlines, then I'd probably have to go in and fill in those lines back here and then everything will kind of blend together. but I uh, just want to give everyone a quick heads up that we are going to close out in just a moment. So if you have any more questions for me uh, that I can answer right now, please uh, pop them in the chat. I'm happy to answer them. Um, but just know that this will be up uh, on YouTube tomorrow. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so you can, you know, get a, you know, refresh your memory or, um, over anything that you missed but again tons of stuff to explore on the app um, we have a lot of tutorial videos to help you out if um, you need some help kind of getting the hang of things navigating the app using all the features but we also have um, a live support team so at the top right of your screen yes the top right of your screen on the app you'll see a uh, question mark icon. Uh, if you tap that, you'll be connected to our support team. So any questions after this class in a moment, moving forward, you can always reach out to support. I'll shade that in after, but one last thing I wanna do here is add that pop of bold that we've been missing this whole time. And that I'll do in these lines here because we're not really anywhere near colors that uh, will interfere with this. Shirley, anything in the chat I can answer? Um, no, just, you know, we have tutorials. Um, if anyone has any questions, we will come in back and go into tutorials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a ton of tutorial videos uh, that just simplify the um, tracing technology and all of the app's features. Um, I also encourage you all to share on spaces. 
Uh, so when you are on my studio, the my studio tab, and uh, you go into trace, you'll see with your camera open um, that fourth tab on the right space. If you open that, you can share your artwork there. Let me know that you joined the Michaels class. I'll share my finished artwork there as well. So you can definitely check it out. But every experience that we have, every artist-led experience, we have spaces uh, and it's it's my favorite part of the app, getting to see what everybody else creates. So uh, I would definitely appreciate if you shared your creation so I can see it. Um, I really, really hope you enjoyed this one. I know I did. Uh, one last thing that I'm going to do is shade this in in my purple. Um, and then I'll take a look and see if there's anything else I want to add. But if I do, I'll be sure to uh, mention that in my caption on Spaces. Um, share a little bit about my thought process, my creative process. But I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who joined me today and to everyone who's checking this out after the fact on YouTube. Um, again, if you have any questions uh, regarding the Cubixel app, uh, you can reach out to support by tapping the question mark icon at the top right of your screen. Um, again, share your artwork on Spaces. I can't wait to see it. I really hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, I hope to see you in our next Learn With Michaels class, which will be on May 6th. I believe, uh, a Monday, we'll be creating a uh, picture frame order for Mother's Day. Super fun, a little bit more crafty. I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, but I think, surely, if we're all set. All right. Thank you guys so much, and I hope to see you soon.